Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I am playing with a really pretty floral set called Botanical Bunch by W Plus 9, and I'm also playing with some Kudatake Clean Color Real Brush Markers. Now these are an unusual water-based marker in that the nibs are actually real brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint some of that red color right there onto my watercolor paper, and then I'm going to go over it with a light pink and kind of blend the colors together where they join and then let it fade back to its light pink color as it's moving along that watercolor paper. And then another method of doing this is to wick the color tip to tip by taking the red marker and letting the light pink wick that red into the brush nib and then go ahead and apply the color that way. You can also take the red marker and lay down your color and then grab a a water brush. I'm just testing it here on my wrist to make sure I've got a good flow. <laughs> I didn't have a paper towel handy at the moment, so got a little splotch of water over there. But you can see it creates a very beautiful watercolor effect. And so now I'm going to go ahead and get started on the card. And you can use any of these uh, techniques. It's There's no right or wrong. It's just whatever you like and, and feel comfortable with or you get good results with. So I'm going to prep the surface of my watercolor paper with an anti-static pouch. And then when I ink up my image and stamp it onto the paper, the embossing powder is only going to stick to where the Versamark is and not um, anywhere where there's any moist there's no other moisture because the anti-static pouch is going to eliminate that. If I have any oil on my fingertips, um, it's going to eliminate any of that um, stickiness that might come from your skin oils and get the embossing powder where you don't want it. So now I'm just going to get my image coated with embossing powder. I've got a tub here of white embossing powder. I just took a couple jars and dumped them into the tub. It's a lot easier to do this than to try to funnel it back into a jar every single time you want to emboss something. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and preheat my heat gun for about a minute and then start to heat. Now it's it's hard to see right here on camera because it's basically white on white, but you want that granular powder to turn nice and shiny and then you know that you've melted it and it's not going to go anywhere. So once we're done and it's cooled, we can go ahead and I'm going to take the stamp image here as a frame of reference because it is hard to see the white on white and I'm just going to prop it up in front of me as I'm working. Now the trick that I like doing with these markers, I just like to take a shade. This is cobalt blue. It looks more like turquoise to me, but they call it cobalt blue. And I just did some really quick swipes of color at the outer edges of the petals. And then I'm going to take my water brush and start pulling the color inward and you it doesn't matter which direction you do this from if you want to you can take the marker and swipe the color towards the inner portion of the petals and then pull the color outward with your water brush but either way you're going to dilute the color and start to spread it around and the great thing about having the image embossed is not only does it look gorgeous it also um, kind of works as a retaining wall to keep the colors and the water there in that section where you painted and then you can just keep going on to the next section so i'm working with the next flower just did some really quick swipes of color there and then i'm going to use the pale green marker to pull that blue color and i'm going to actually end up with something that looks more like a teal or a bright teal because of these two hues blending together. So here I'm just going to continue the same process where I'm just swiping color very quickly right even over the tops of the embossing um, and letting it hit the paper and then pulling that color out with the other marker. And I sometimes I'm going to add a little bit too much color, a little bit too much water, and I can wick that up with some paper towel and just kind of absorb that a little bit where I get too much. And then I'm I can also lift the color in other areas that I've already painted and apply it to other areas. Now I decided after my pale blue flower had dried, I wanted it to have more of that teal color. So I came in with the green marker and added some green and then blended it out. And then I decided, oh, I want more blue. I want it to be a deeper teal color. So I added more blue and then I'm going to pull and push the water uh, the color around there with the water brush. So now I'm just going to highlight different areas, different leaves with the light green and in the center of the flowers here. And I'm just going right over the top and wherever the paper is exposed, um, it, that color is going to sink down in there. And then I can just come with a paper towel and blot away any excess color or water that's sitting on top of the embossed lines. This is not like working with alcohol markers. Alcohol markers would etch away the embossed lines, but these are water-based, so they're just going to sit on the top. And then you can blot 
off the excess without ruining your embossing. So I'm just going to continue blending out this green color here with the pale green marker and I'm just going to keep on going <laughs> and using the same technique. I just wanted to highlight some of the areas where the leaves don't actually have details that could be painted in. So I'm just going to brush the color right over the top and onto the watercolor paper and then grab my water brush and just continue pulling and dragging that color out to create some shading and depth and dimension as I'm going. And I have to rotate my paper as I'm working because I like to pull my brush out in a certain direction and so for some reason it's easier for me to just keep rotating my paper as I work so I'm sorry it's kind of spinning around there as I go. And then for some last contrasting color to really make these flowers pop, I decided to come in with some yellow and orange. And I already did the yellow on some of those smaller blossoms, but then I took the orange right over the top of these little pom pom -y looking flowers. And then I'm just gonna blend it out with the yellow. And it's just gonna create a really warm, orangey yellow color the two colors are going to mix together um, and blend into the watercolor paper and then i can just take my paper towel and blot over the top any color that's sitting on the embossing lines will just get absorbed into that paper towel i just make sure that i'm not smearing or rubbing i'm tapping over the top so i don't contaminate what i've colored so prettily and then i'm going to take a black marker and go ahead and apply color from the black clean color brush marker onto an acrylic block and then I'm going to grab my water uh, brush and dilute it a little bit and then just flick that color right off the side of the acrylic block. This gives me a lot of control when I'm creating a spattered effect. I love it. It's my favorite way to create my little spatters on my cards. And then I'm going to add some adhesive here. I already mounted it to some pattern paper. This is from the Citrus Bliss collection. Now, I didn't put adhesive around all the outer edges of these panels when I mounted them together. I just put it on the center portions or areas so that when I mounted it to the base card, I could come around the corners and the outer edges and just curl and lift those up. And I think it creates the illusion of more layers than are really there. And it's a very artsy look, and I like the fact that it's not perfectly centered straight. It's a little bit askew. And it, I don't know, I just think it's fun. Now I did add a little strip of scrap washi tape. That's the Lifestyle Crafts black and white shape and tape that I love so much. And I had a little bit of it there and I was like, oh, that'll be fun. So I added that for a little bit more pattern. And then I stamped, thanks a bunch from Alta News label love stamp set. It really looks like Dymo label and you don't even know that it's not the real thing until you run your finger across it because it's very dimensional looking. And the card is finished. This is an excellent way, a very easy way to get beautiful watercolor effects. I just love how fast and quick it goes and the results are spectacular. You can see still shots and the complete list of supplies over at our classroom blog. Everything is available at ellenhudson.com and thanks for watching.